this is Ryan. And I am Joy. And we are back from our brief hiatus with the book club, with, book club without a club. Um, here to discuss not the water margin, but Zori <laughs> by Laird Hunt. Yeah, the uh, the water margins. It'll happen. It'll happen eventually. But it just didn't happen now. So we uh, instead of waiting longer. We just went with another short book. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I have been dying to know your thoughts about it. So, I am a bit of a sucker for when it comes to books where it almost seems like nothing happens, yet like everything is happening and it all hinges on the quality of the writing. And I think think this fit the bill I really enjoyed it I I didn't know uh I didn't you know I didn't know what it was about going into it like always and even starting out it took a second to kind of get his style and then the flow of it oh really to me yeah okay it it wasn't that way for me so you just opened it and then all of a sudden you were just like boom off with it I was so immersed, and it's exactly the kind of book that I love. I see. I when you kept dropping hints about like couldn't wait to talk about it. I couldn't tell at first. I was like, "Oh, because you love this book and you really want to talk a lot about it." But then said something else, and I was like, "Well, maybe she hated it." And I, because I, I assumed that you would enjoy it. I, I really, I really did assume that you would. So I made a I made a safe assumption there. Yes, you are correct because it is exactly the kind of book that I love. It's a very quiet, atmospheric book. Just exactly the kind of book that I really enjoy from time to time. So not always. Um. Well, it's um. If I can find them, <laughs> I mean, I read them, but just the ones that I have read lately have have just not been this way but it's it's exactly the type of book that I love so what made a what what drew you in I guess what what was it that like at what point were you like this is the book for joy I I loved it from the very beginning it wasn't slow I didn't have to even get used to his writing I I just loved his style See, I think, okay, I don't, I don't think this, but I think that other people, if they read it, they would think it's nothing but slow because it just, it kind of wanders. But I, it's, it, it's interesting that it wanders because it almost takes place in the same spot. So. I think you may feel that way because it's not plot driven. Right. What most readers expect from their books. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised by it. I was too, and, um, I am so glad that we decided to read it because I don't think I would have picked it up otherwise until you mentioned that it was the National Book finalist mm-hmm. and it lost out to hell of a book. So what do you think about that? Um, tr- I, truthfully, I, I know you got something. <laughs> truthfully, I feel that this this one should have won. Oh, really? I enjoyed hell of a book, but I enjoyed this one more. Yeah, but this one... This one, okay, so it is, it's a book, so it's a, it is very literary, but hell of a book was so wild that I kind of like the fact that that one won since it was so different. There was a novelty I mean, to it for sure. I mean, don't, like, like we discussed, hell of a book was definitely, definitely got heavy, but, but yeah, I don't, I guess I'm glad that I don't have to pick a winner <laughs> and I can just, how do I get on the committee where I just read them and, Actually, no. I'm. I think I'm on that committee. We're at a library. <laughs> that's 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 what we do. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm laughing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it tells the story of the. Uh, the is it the word titular titular character titular titular mm-hmm. it just felt wrong for some reason i don't know <laughs> um but zori and uh basically her entire life but it's interesting it's how he does it. it it's such a small book where it doesn't like drone on in these it but it's little moments um so everything from 
when she was orphaned and grew up with her aunt to essentially not her death, but right there at the cusp of it. Yes. Well, like, I mean, like we said as well, um, it pretty much takes place in one county in Indiana, but she does travel just a bit, especially in her, I guess, quote unquote, youth, um, but because she, she's looking for work in the Great Depression. And the part where she enters, she starts working at the, uh, the watch factory with the radium. The radium dial company. That's it. The, uh, at that point, um, and the way he built it and talking about the girls in the dark dancing when she showed up um, as like to welcome her and the, the man, the overseer, um, who would like sprinkle a little bit in his drinks because it was like it was the future and he wanted to like put it in a blanket. As soon as that stuff started being described that way, I knew to look out for something that seemed wonderful, but in the end would be completely dangerous. And I think he dropped hints of those, like he set it up there mm -hmm. and he dropped hints of those throughout. And that's, that's what I really, that's one of the aspects I really enjoyed about how he put the book together. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, my reading experience with that part was a little different in that I read the Radium Girls and so, like, each time they worked with it or put it in their drink or dipped the brush in their m mouth, I, I just cringed because I knew what was coming. Um, but I do agree with you. He did a very, very good job of, of, of just um, setting up that, that part. Right. And then, like, and normally, I guess with other books, like, they introduce someone or something, and you kind of wait especially with the idea of like it's gonna turn bad. Um, so like the teacher was very prominent right before she left, Mr. Thompson. And I kept- Or Thomas? Thomas, yeah, Mr. Thomas. And I kept being like, oh, don't make him a bad guy. Like, don't, don't ruin this guy. And, he, and he, spoiler alert, he, he doesn't. He's, he's a good dude. I was actually worried about that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I mean, cause you know, books can take a turn right. quite drastically. And, and you never know which direction it will head. Speaking of, were you surprised by anything? Hmm. I was. I, I don't think I was. So you saw her, um, her falling in love? With Noah? Yeah. I did because when he was first introduced through her eyes, I guess, mm -hmm. she, she seemed she, quite struck by him. Yeah, she did. It, it, uh, he, she was, he was definitely described, as, she was very attracted to him for sure, but I didn't think after all that that it would, that she would fully like commit to like standing under a tree in a storm just to. I do have to admit something. So I, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I was surprised at the fact that, I wasn't surprised that she fell in love with him but it surprised me that he didn't return the love. Oh, really? Yes. See, I wasn't surprised by that one since he was so enamored with, with Opal, who he doesn't see. And it's not like today's time. This was, what, the 50s by this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, and he never got to see her. And all it was was letters. And it's not like he had like a bunch of photographs lying around or could, I don't know, video chat. I don't know. But so I wasn't too completely. Wait, that is I was so more surprised by the the other, all right. the other side of it. Wow, that is so interesting <laughs> that we we have opposite views about this. The reason why, I mean, maybe I I was just holding out hope that they would get together, since um, even though Opal's absence left such a mark for him, I just figured that that would drive him more towards Zori, right. but it obviously didn't. Right. Did you wrestle with anything? Like, could you not like anchor down on certain, any certain parts or certain images? I. Okay, so I. I don't know why I said that certain parts didn't surprise me because um, I was taken aback at the part when. Um, oh my goodness! Is his name? Or, no, no, no. Oh, the, the sheriff? No. No, the husband? Um, the, 
Oh my gosh, the one who she fell in love with. Noah? Yes, Noah. <laughs> we were just talking about him. <laughs> there were many characters. Okay. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, if you couldn't anchor oh. on anything and then something about Noah. Yes. Um, I was very surprised that he suddenly became unmoored and, and um, just tried to get himself to the institution. I mean, well, I, I mean, don't know. That seemed like that. I mean, he just lost, lost his, the last of his you know, parents. He lost his mother and then there was no, I mean, not just, but in the, that, that had to be heavy and he relied so heavily on his family. So you think that his, his parents really angered him right. to um, play some time. Right. Yeah, and then once he, once he had nothing, all he had left was his idea of Opal, really. Not really her, Opal herself, but the idea that he always carried for, what, like four or five decades at that point. True, but Zori really tried to, you know, fill in the gap that was left by his parents and Yeah, but Opal. she didn't she didn't intend to. That was mm -hmm. put upon her and it just progressed that way. So maybe she would have never felt that if the sheriff didn't ask her the to do the favor. Mm -hmm. I I just loved the image of her cooking these dinners for him. I liked how detailed it was. Yes, I mean I just thought that it was just so done. I mean so well done. Yeah, but that, then that part. Well, but you do do uh, you do like some food writing. <laughs> that was like my favorite part. Just the descriptions of the meals that she cooked for him. But I, I don't know why I was just holding out hope, hope that they would find love with each other. But I guess it. It ended the way it should have. I mean, I guess in a way they, they found love with themselves. It's, I guess that was the uh, one of the ultimate goals of the, the book. The other thing I was going to mention is, don't you think that it's, it's a book about hope, grief, loneliness, and love? Although hope is, um, there's a caveat with that, <laughs> just because her, her aunt, you know, really discouraged her belief in hope. Yeah, but only when she was young. But the I think pretty much starting with the teacher that kind of rekindled it, it for her. Right. So she she always went. My aunt said this, but there always was an unspoken but to like every time the aunt was mentioned, except for the Christmas tree. And what's what's a more hopeful time than Christmas? I guess. <laughs> but oh, the, the reason I asked about the I oh. anchor something was the whole time. Okay, so Noah is older than Zori, mm -hmm. but I, I kept every or even when she visits Opal, it took me a second to like regroup in my mind because I'm picturing Zori as she's aging, but then I'm like, oh yeah, Noah's not young. Like when he's doing all this stuff, he's a much older man. And when she describes Opal, you know, initially I was thinking of someone young. But I was like, no way, she must, she's got to be even, she's got to be like at least Zori's age. So that took me a second to like step back and see it. But I think the reason I did this, how he developed the, and wrote about those two characters where they kind of just stayed ageless. They didn't really grow. Like Zori I, and? No, uh, Noah and Opal. Opal. Obviously Opal because she's not heavy in it, but, mm -hmm. but like they didn't, they didn't really grow as people if that makes sense and I think something I think something was up with Noah he wasn't do you mean developed or yeah but like the characters yeah they were no they were developed in the sense that they didn't develop as a human like as they aged they didn't learn new things like Noah was always mm -hmm. Noah and he always the whole time always opal always just the work he was very simple He was a very simple person and he stayed that way and even when he would talk about his dad and stuff, it was always just like the little moments, but it was always kind of the same moments. So, I don't know, I just, I liked how he did it. I liked how he did it. Do you think they were, do you feel that Noah was stuck in time from when Opal was taken to the institution? It could have something to do with it. I don't think he was like fully, uh, I think his, 
mental development as a person was stagnated. Okay. Is what I'm, I guess I'm trying to get at. Okay. Kind of like not no, not quite not quite like uh, what's his name Lenny and of mice and men, but like something was I feel like something was I, up I with him. I sense that. Yes, like he wasn't. So, you're right. Something was up, but it never was stated, mm-hmm. and I I I like that. Mm-hmm. I like how. Okay. It wasn't. That wasn't a focus of it because Noah was is like still a person and he still was like hardworking, but he was he'd always just stare off and he was very quiet, but maybe not because he was thinking too hard, you know. Okay, yes, that's a good point. I mean, I have to agree. So whereas like the sheriff, you know, he was very like quick witted and and gregarious and mm-hmm. the exact opposite of of Noah. Mm-hmm. And then I'd even say I'd even say what was her husband's name? Oh, who? Her husband. Henry? Oh, um, Harold. Harold. Yeah, I, I, like, he was very much like the sheriff, too, where he just, he was maybe too smart for his own good. Virgil was definitely too smart for his own good. (laughs) Yes. Um, didn't Hank have feelings for Zora? Yeah. Or did I read it wrong? No, he, he, he did, but, and he took a shot, and she said, and she basically said no, and he said, good night, (laughs) ma'am. I actually read a review of this book that described the pace of the book perfectly. The um, author of that review, she, uh, they described it as, um, or to a Midwestern flower unfolding. Okay. And I thought that was just so perfect and so beautiful. Yeah. Is that just like a... Like you know, just very slow and, and just... Almost in a delicate way. Or was that like a, a review someone just threw on like Goodreads or something? Was that like a professional oh, no, review? Like it, it was a review on some site, which I don't remember. <laughs> I, was just, I was just curious. If... It wasn't on Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you read anything by, by the author before? I, I can't even say I'm familiar with them. I have not, but after this book, I actually found myself looking up... Um, other books that he has written, but I think this one um, seems to be or has has the most positive reviews. Okay. The others were, were good, but just the reviews were mixed. Oh. Well, I mean, I guess... I, guess I mean, I guess they, they are with all books. Yeah. There's no book that everyone, you know, loves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And um, did this book conjure up any other book that we've read to you? There was one portion that made me think of a particular book. Um, well, good thing we've only read like three. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have no idea. Really? I was wondering if, if you um, thought about this. But her, her musings on time, clocks, and watches? <laughs> Reminded me of Tinkers. <laughs> so, so the fact that she didn't go into full detail about the <laughs> clocks and watches, Thank, thankfully, <laughs> is what saved the book for you. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, but just the um, mention of of all of that um, about time and yeah, and its progression just made me think. Of I mean, it. I guess you could also compare it to because it it's easy. about memories in a way and like just. Yes. Um, something else that I was, I don't know how we're getting through this week, to be honest. <laughs> no, I am struggling. <laughs> I have been struggling. Okay. It's just good, good time to be back. But it's about, you know, all the, uh, where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> um, just so beautifully written. And I like it so much that I... I'm considering buying my own copy <laughs> to add to my ever-growing <laughs> you know, library. Well, at least this one, it's small enough where if you, if you get <laughs> it, you can, you can stack it on something, and it won't teeter the whole thing. This might knock everything <laughs> over. <laughs> it might be the, 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 the straw. Yes. Like the butterfly and the Wiley e. Coyote cartoon. Yes. But I, I enjoyed it that much. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well. Because I, I couldn't remember. Well... You are the type of reader who really appreciates different styles of writing and whatnot. So, 
So I figured that you would like it, but I, I just didn't. I don't know your general opinion of like slow, quiet books. I oh, mean, yeah. No, I, I mean, I guess you can't really put every slow, quiet book in the same category. But this one, this one worked for me, and some of it might have been the length. I mean, I'm not saying that it is for me, but it could be a factor that I just haven't really thought about because it, it is, it is fairly short. It is, mm-hmm. and I mean the chapters are long. So, oh, I was gonna. What are the chapter titles? I didn't know. I couldn't <clears throat> really make it. I, maybe I should have. Maybe it's a poem. Maybe I should have googled it, mm-hmm. or something. But truthfully, I didn't even. I didn't think too critically about the chapter headings. I mean, oh, I feel like the way it was built, though, they have to, they had to be there for a reason. And it wasn't until like the fifth or sixth chapter. So there's what seven chapters, six chapters. There's not many. There's mm-hmm. six or seven, mm-hmm. and the penultimate one is the only time the line was capitalized. See, only you notice things <laughs> like this. I, I mean, um. I guess I was so so focused on the story itself uh-huh. that I don't usually pay attention to like chapter headings and whatnot. But you are the one who who notices everything. Oh, I don't, I don't have any device on. I'm gonna have to Google this. Maybe we <laughs> should have did it before this so we could be like, you know what it means. But I am wondering if if you were to read each chapter heading, if it would make like one. I thought about that. I thought that might be it until I hit that one with the capital. I'm like, okay, well, this obviously needs to, maybe I need to rearrange it. I don't know. So that that did cross my mind because it's like um, on a winter's night a traveler. And if you take all the chapter headings, it's a paragraph essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was like, well, maybe he's doing that until I hit the capital letter. And I was like, okay, now I'm lost again. Okay, well, see, now I'm going to have to try to figure it out (laughs) myself because, as I said, I I was so – absorbed in in the story that 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 was sort of um i i put that on on the back burner uh-huh. to come back to and then i forgot about it <laughs> That's so right. but yes i mean i i can always count on you too <laughs> well not always sometimes sometimes i might be half asleep <laughs> <laughs> but i guess we also need to figure out what we're doing next okay <laughs> we have got to get cracking on yeah, the I've, water margin. Yeah. Um, the, the, the drawback to that book is that you can't put it down for more than a few days because you have to start all over yeah. each time. And I think that's my biggest issue with it, just because, you know, with everything else going on. When you go back to it, you either have to read so far back that you right. might as well just start over, or... No, I, that's... Do you have the same issue? Yeah, no. Whenever I go to pick it up again, I already know I'm going to have to start at the beginning. <laughs> so. so I guess we are going to have to start from the beginning. Yeah. I have a general idea of like where I am and what's going on, but I don't know if I remember enough to really keep yeah. going I, and mem- I remember okay I guess I remember kind of like the big the big events mm-hmm. but what's gonna if I started now I was gonna I'm gonna lose it at the character names that's what's gonna throw me off but I remember yeah. you know there's big things that happen that I remember and there's actually it's funny in a way I guess mm-hmm. but I, so I guess I guess in a couple of weeks we'll just surprise <laughs> everyone and ourselves if and see what see what uh see what we end up doing so it's just gonna be a we'll, we'll see what happens okay see what happens because sounds good all right but life is full of surprises so who knows <laughs> you know i never it should have been obvious because i've heard of ground beef but i've never heard of ground ham and she said she made the casserole out of the ground oh. ham, and I was like, "Oh, that that should have oh, yes. that shouldn't have uh, struck me as oddly as it right. as it did." She made a ham loaf. That's what it was, <laughs> ham loaf. And I've never, never heard of a ham loaf. Really? Yeah. 
did you enjoy reading about <laughs> the food description as much as I did? Yeah, I mean, it was almost like so detailed that, like, some like when she made the the it was basically like a potato gratin, but without like slicing them too thin. Mm-hmm. It seemed like I mean, you can almost figure out a recipe for all these things. It was mm-hmm. it's very uh. I knew you were going to like the food. I knew at some <laughs> point you were going to mention all the foods. There. I do have one other thing to ask you about Zori. Um, were you expecting the um, radium to play a more prominent role in the book and in her life? I think it did end up pay- playing a s- prominent role to an extent because mm-hmm. of the, well, fr- of the friends. friends. Yeah. Um, maybe at first I thought it would, I mean, it's like the, like the teacher, like, don't make him a bad guy. I thought the radium would come back. And I think it did. I think how it ended up playing the big role was in a subtle way with the friends. Cause it all, as it, you got closer to the end of the book, it was about, you know, a lot more about death and the end of life. Mm-hmm. So were you expecting like some big? Well, I, um, when I got to that part, I thought that he was setting up the um, book, you know, for that. Well, she did end up losing, or she did end up having a miscarriage, and that may have. Um, right. You know. But you thought uh, you thought she was going to get sicker, or? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's a well. I mean, she wouldn't let herself be a. Uh, she wouldn't stop moving long enough to get sick. She. That's true. I don't yeah. know how. I don't. She had to be a made-up character because no one works that hard. Weren't you tired just <laughs> reading about her? I mean, just all that she did on the farm and whatnot. That's really, it's really impressive. I mean, I got exhausted. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how it was, though. It's. We're over here complaining, being tired, <laughs> working at a library. Look, the time just changed. <laughs> <laughs>